Okay, Houston, right, we've had a problem here. Mrs. Houston, say again, please. Uh, Houston, we've had a problem. Houston, we don't have a problem. Hey, today we want to talk about uniform, uniform circular motion. So what does that mean? That means that you've got an object that's moving uniformly in a circle, right? So you've got something moving in a circle. By the way, they don't always have to travel in a full circle. You could have a car that's going around a bend. In a, it's a circular bend, and those are like a, a lot of types of problems that we're going to see. And what's true if it's uniform, then you have a constant speed, but you have a changing velocity. Now, remember speed is distance over time. So if I have an object that's moving around this uh, circle at, you know, 8 meters per second, the reality is, it's, since it's changing its direction, remember velocity isn't just speed, but also velocity has a direction. And if you think about it, I mean, if I have a, a whirly whirl and I'm swirling it around, I've got like a string, a rock on the end of a string, I'm moving it around and around and around and around, it's changing its direction all the time. And if it's changing its velocity, it's going to have an acceleration. I mean, a good example of this is an image like this, right? You've got, you've probably been on one of these uh, at an amusement park, and it's going around and around and around. And it turns out that the human body can detect, we've got basically built inside of us what I will call an accelerometer. And when you detect changes in motion, what you're, you're detecting is a change in velocity. So even if a car is going around the bend and staying at, say, 40 miles an hour, you can feel it because you're changing direction. And so, uh, yeah, so you, what happens when you have a constant speed and you have a changing velocity? Now, what can we measure in this whole process? Now, it's a circle, so a circle is going to have a radius, right? And we can find what the velocity is. So what do we call the velocity? We actually call it this, that tangential velocity. Now, if you think about it for a moment, it's going to be its displacement over time, but what distance has it traveled at any given time? If you recall, the, the circumference of a circle is 2 pi r, all right, so that's the distance, divided by the time it takes to do one rotation, and that's t. Now, by the way, let's talk about what this capital T is. The capital T is called the period which means the amount of time for one revolution of, of the circle. And so the velocity, let's just kind of summarize our equation, the velocity is 2 pi r over t. Now, speaking of t, sometimes what we do is we have another unit that's related to t, and it's called the frequency. And that's usually given in something like rotations per minute, T-A-T, rotations per minute, or RPMs. But the problem with that is, of course, is we want to, that's per minute, you may have to do conversion. So in terms of frequency, uh, frequency is equal to 1 over T, all right, or little f is 1 over T, or capital T, little t is time, all right. And then it will have units of seconds to the minus one. So if I give you in like rotations per minute, you're going to have to convert it to rotations per second when you're doing problems. So that is, so let's, let's summarize. This is an important equation right here. Um, and because you're changing your speed, then you are accelerating. And so we can define another term. And the other term is called centripetal acceleration. And centripetal acceleration, the acceleration in the circle, right, is A, is V squared over R, R being the radius of the circle. So if I know the velocity from this equation, I take the velocity squared divided by the radius. Now, warning, sometimes in a problem, they might give you the diameter of the circle, so you may have to cut it in half to solve for that. And that leads us to one last term, and the last term is centripetal force. If something's accelerating, it exerts a force. And if you recall, the 
Newton's law, F, second law, F equals MA. But in this case, if it's a, if it's a centripetal force, we would say M times the V squared over R. So that's the centripetal force. It's just M times A, where A is now defined a little differently because it's now moving in a uniform circular motion. Now let's do one quick problem. The circular blade of a table saw is 25 centimeters in diameter and spins at 3,600 RPMs. How fast is one rotation and how fast is one tooth moving at the edge of a saw blade? Um, not how fast, this would be how much time. Time, yeah. So this is actually where we've got rotations per minute. So if that means we have 3,600 rotations in one minute, all right, how many seconds does it travel? All right, so first I'm going to convert rotations per minute to rotations per second. And I'm going to say one minute is um, 60 seconds. And that means that it's going to be at uh, 60 rotations per one second. And that's the frequency, right? But frequency is equal to one over the period, right? So if I want to find out how many seconds it takes to go through one rotation, which is the period, then it's the inverse of 60, or you can just take 1 divided by 60, and you get point zero one seven seconds. So it rotates once every point zero one seven seconds. So that's the answer to question 1. For question 2, how fast is one tooth moving at the edge of the blade? Remember, what is the equation for velocity? Velocity is 2 pi r over the period. We've got the point 017, so we can say 2 times pi times r. Now, warning, this is the diameter of the saw blade, 25, so this will be 12.5, oh, and that's in centimeters, check that, 0 0.0125 meters divided by 0 0.017 seconds. And when you do all that math, you get a very high speed, I get 47 meters per second. That's fast, 47 meters per second. Do not stick your finger in the edge of a saw blade. It's coming at 47 meters per second. And just for fun, you might ask, I just didn't ask it, but if I was to try and find the accelerations in centripetal acceleration, A is V squared over R, I would just take 47 squared divided by the radius, which is 0 0.0125, and I get 1.8 times 10 to the fourth meters per second squared, so a very big number. It's going to be accelerating because it's changing its speed very rapidly, and yeah, so again, it's just utilizing the equations that we learned earlier. Houston, this isn't that hard. You got basically this equation to know, and you've got this equation, and I guess you got F equals 1 over T. You've got these three equations that defined circular motion. We don't have a problem.